Hi, I'm Joe Ferrace. Welcome to a special edition of Joe's Movie Club. Over the years, there have been a lot of movies made about Christmas or during the Christmas time. But very few of them are any good. Most of them are really crap. So today, we're going to talk about my five favorite Christmas movies. Maybe they're not the best Christmas movies. I think they are. But these are my five favorites. Let's get started. Coming in at number five on my favorite Christmas movie list is The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife is a wonderful tale about angels and love and Christmas. It is stars Cary Grant during a time when his career was taking some odd directions and he wasn't th that happy. And against the advice of all of his uh, advisors, he decided to make uh, The Bishop's Wife, which is a story where he plays an angel. It's incredible. The Bishop's Wife is portrayed by Loretta Young and the Bishop himself is portrayed by David Niven. Now, David Niven isn't necessarily known for his comedic performances, but and then this movie isn't really a comedy. It's kind of a warm, fuzzy story about Christmas, the Christmas spirit, and and the and maybe to some the real meaning of Christmas, whatever that may be for you. So, but David Niven, in toward the end of the film, delivers an amazing comedic performance. So this is kind of a movie you watch. Maybe not with a lot of belly laughs, but with smiles. It also has, in a feature role, Monty Woolley. Now, most people these days, unless they're diehard movie fans, don't know who Monty Woolley was. But he was a character actor who made a few movies. I don't think he made that many. In fact, his starring role was in a film called The Man Who Came to Dinner. And it's all where he plays a grumpy writer or newspaper guy. I don't remember, really. But he comes to visit some people for a short time. He breaks his leg, or maybe doesn't break his leg, and he winds up disrupting the household. It's a terrifically funny f film, a wonderful performance by Monty Woolley. And while he has a small role in The Bishop's Wife, he's he knows that Cary Grant is an angel and... Anyway, their interaction, this whole movie, you will smile, you will feel good. What more do you want in a Christmas movie? We're going to change eras a bit. The Bishop's Wife was made in 1947. Elf was made in 2003. Now, I am not a big fan of Will Farrell's. I think his best role was in Stranger Than Fiction, a terrific film that's Again, kind of humorous, kind of serious, a fantasy. It's just a great movie. And if you haven't seen Stranger Than Fiction, Dustin Hoffman makes a small appearance. It, it's really, really a great movie. And, and he's great again in Elf. Another good performance of his is in a really underrated film from the 90s, I think, called Dick. Now, the Dick in question is Dick Nixon, and this is a comedic look at Watergate in which Will Ferrell portrays, believe it or not, Bob Woodward of Woodward and Bernstein, and, and they go into the whole thing. Great movie. And Elf is like that too. It's another great, funny movie. Bob Newhart is in it. It's in color. It's Zoe, or Zoe, whatever you want to call her, Deschanel is, is in it. James Caan, a is play oh geez he's wonderful is in this film as well so elf is a funny movie as you might expect with will farrell but it's also warm and it just feels you again you're filled with the christmas spirit when you watch this movie if you don't have a copy of elf i believe that um a 4k version was just released and i hear i haven't seen the 4k version that it's very much better than the Blu-ray. So if you're 4K capable, pick up a copy of Elf for the holiday season. You'll laugh, you'll have a good time, and it's, it's good for all ages. You watch it with the whole family. Don't miss Elf. Coming up at number three on my list is The Miracle on 34th Street. Not the remake which starred Richard Attenborough, as wonderful an actor as he may be, 
Believe me, nothing beats Edwin Gwen's performance. And I believe, I may be wrong, if I'm wrong, I'll make my mistakes known down here. I believe Edmund Gwynn won an Oscar for his portrayal of the man who is or thinks he is Santa Claus. And the whole cast is wonderful. Maureen O'Hara. I mean, has she ever been in a bad movie? It never happened. She's sparkling. She's acerbic. She's intelligent. She is always great to watch. John Payne plays a more or less love interest. The movie really centers around Edmund Gwen as Santa. And don't miss a young Natalie Wood as the daughter of Maureen O'Hara. This, her performance along with Edmund Gwen's is kind of the glue that holds this whole movie together. It is a classic. Everybody knows it was one of the best Christmas movies made. For a long time, it was my number one pick as the best Christmas movie. But meanwhile, watch Miracle on 34th Street, the 1947 version. Interestingly, the same year that The Bishop's Wife was made. Evidently, coming off of that whole post-war thing, there was a hopeful spirit in the country, and they made these two very hopeful, wonderful, warm, and amusing films. Coming in at number two in what has become a modern classic, if you want to call 1983 modern, is A Christmas Story, Ralphie's Quest, for a Red Rider BB gun with a compass in the stock. I had read many articles, magazine articles, by Gene Shepard, who wrote the book that Ralphie's Adventures Here in A Christmas Story is based on. And I was always impressed with the, the whimsy and the, the quality of the writing. In fact, after I, after I watched this movie the first time, which goes way back to 1983, I believe, I read every one of the books and there are many books that he wrote about Ralphie and follows Ralphie as Ralphie gets older until he goes into the army. So it's there's more here than the Christmas story, but the Christmas story is funny, it's warm, it's got incredible performance by Darren McGavin, who's I think one of the actors who's really, really underrated. But he, as dad, he, the, or the old man, I guess he's called throughout the film, as the old man... He is hysterical. Melinda Dillon tops her performance in Close Encounters by being the ultimate mom. And Peter Billingsley, as Ralphie, is, gives the kid performance of a lifetime. Forget Home Alone. That's another Christmas movie I don't really care for. This, Ralphie, is brilliant. And the little fantasy sequences when Ralphie is suffering from soap poisoning or when he knocks the uh, the wheel lug nuts into the into the woods at the dark, and uh, Dad gets upset with him about that. This film is priceless. It belongs in as number two because it is classic, wonderful film. Now, what's interesting to me is this film was directed by Bob Clark. Now, you probably don't know who Bob Clark is unless you're a serious cinephile, but Bob Clark directed a film that's kind of a raunchy teen comedy called Porky's. I mean, he may even directed the sequel. I don't know. But he also directed a wonderful Sherlock Holmes film called Murder by Decree. And if you're interested in the whole Sherlock Holmes thing, then you want to watch Murder by Decree because it has one of the best casts ever. As Sherlock Holmes, we have Christopher Plummer. What a, I had always thought Christopher Plummer was English, but he's a Canadian. But he is incredible. It may be next to Basil Rathbone, which is always my sentimental favorite, maybe the best ever Sherlock Holmes on film. As Dr. Watson, James Mason, I mean, wow. And the neat thing is, this is a story about Jack the Ripper and how. Sherlock Holmes gets involved in the case. And it's the ending has some theories that at the time when the film was made had uh, their interpretation of what the Jack the Ripper murders were all about. Now, we go from Christmas Story to Jack the Ripper is a big jump. Bob, that, that shows you the breadth of the talent of a guy like Bob Clark. Speaking of directors, I was in Home Depot the other day. Somebody comes up to me and says, you're the guy that did that video review about uh, it's a Wonderful Life, and you said you didn't like it. 
It wasn't really a review of It's a Wonderful Life. It was, I was talking about Frank Capra and Frank Capra's films. And I mentioned that I didn't like It's a Wonderful Life. And I moved on talking about uh, Frank Capra's release of the Criterion edition of Arsenic and Olace. So, I still don't like It's a Wonderful Life. Instead, I would like to submit to you a better movie than It's a Wonderful Life. The Family Man. Now, The Family Man, speaking of directors, like I said, was directed by Brett Ratner. When it comes to Brett Ratner, he's not widely beloved by a lot of people, especially comic book fans who weren't happy with the way he directed the third X-Men film. I, I didn't like that movie either. But I have this theory about directors. And my theory is that even really bad directors like maybe Brett Ratner, and I think that's probably true, have one good film in them. In this case, his film was The Family Man. Now, when I talk to my friends about this, they say, oh, no, that's not a good theory because what about Michael Bay? And I say two words, The Rock. And they say, oh, yeah, that's a good movie. Now, then they say, what about Uwe Boll? And I said, I really don't want to talk about that because that may be the exception that proves the rule. And I'm really not good at boxing. So Uwe, I love you, man. The Family Man, on the other hand, is Brett Ratner's best movie. And it is the best Christmas movie for a bunch of reasons. In It's a Wonderful Life, Poor Jimmy Stewart, he has a terrible life. What is the, what's the good part? He's a little kid. He gets beat up by the guy at the drugstore. He f jumps in the lake to save his dopey brother. And, you know, he only has a couple of good things happening to him And uh, when, when he meets Donna Reed. And they go to the, the dance or prom or whatever the heck it is. And they, and they fall through the, into the swimming pool. And that's, that's the best part of that movie. But then everything else is terrible. His, his uncle's a drunken bum. He loses money, forgets where he puts stuff. The local Scrooge dude, he's putting the heat on him. And so he's depressed. He went to, this is happy stuff, right? This is wonderful, right? It's wonderful. So he's standing on a bridge. He's going to jump off and kill himself into the, into the water. And it's coming full circle from the beginning where he jumps in the water to save his dopey brother. So what happens? Along comes this misfit angel. And the angel says, oh, well, you know, as terrible as your life is, it could be worse. And so he takes him to the town and shows him the town that's now called Potterville. And it's even worse. It's sleazy. It's a red light district. And people are, it's just a mess. It's not a wonderful life. So finally he says, well, I don't want to kill myself. And then for like 15 minutes at the end of the movie, they go to this party and the people come in and throw money at him. And his brother comes home from the Navy. And what? It's, he, it's miserable to the last 10 minutes of the movie. And all of a sudden, oh, now it's wonderful. The angel got his wings because the bell rang. Come on. This movie is different. He has. It starts Nick Cage. Okay, Nick Cage. He has a great life. He's rich. He's a stockbroker. He's making money hand over foot. But it's an empty, soulless life. But he's having a good time. So he's out on Christmas Eve. And he goes to a convenience store to pick up some booze, I think. Just then, this dude comes in and wants to rob the store. And he talks him out of it. And then they, he goes out the door... And this dude, he's the angel. And he tells Nick, well, Nick, you were pretty nice in there. I think you need to see a glimpse. And so instead of showing him how horrible life would be if Nick wasn't around, he wakes up and now he's married to his college sweetheart. He has two little kids, and he's selling tires at Big Ed's Tire Place. Well, initially, he's thinking, well, what the heck is this? But then he comes to realize, 
gradually and humorously. It's a funny movie. It, there's no laughs in uh, It's a Wonderful Life. There's plenty of laughs in The Family Man, especially from the kids. The two kids are wonderful in this film. He sees that he could have had a wonderful life. And just when he's at the peak of his happiness, along comes a reminder from the angel, because the angel warned him that there would be a bell, just like the Dobie Bell in It's a Wonderful Life, that there would be this bell. And all of a sudden, he's back to the stockbroker life. And then he realizes this could have been a great life. So he tries to hook up with his old college sweetheart who's moved on and she's getting ready, of course, shades of the April Fools. If you read my review of that, I'll put a link below. Going to Paris. And he's gonna run down the ramp just like Jack Lemon in the April Fools to talk her out of it. I'm telling you, this is a this is a movie that is so underrated. It's under people's radar. It came out in 2000, so it's 22 years old already. But this is the movie you want to watch on Christmas Eve. You can watch it with your family. The kids might miss a few points, but it's certainly family friendly. This is a wonderful movie. It is about a wonderful life. And that is why it's better than It's a Wonderful Life. So The Family Man, directed by Brent Ratner, goes to show you that even maybe the least talented director can put together something magical. And that's the story of The Family Man. So if you're hanging in there with me, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I get crazy about these things. I love movies and watch for some new things coming along. And uh, I hope to see you again real soon. And if I don't see you before Christmas, have a really happy holidays and a Merry Christmas to you.